Hello, welcome to another edition of the Fifth Quarter. I'm Mike Shirecki, sports editor of HeraldStandard.com, joined as always by George Von Benko, author of Memory Lane, and a radio personality at WNBS AM 590, Saturday mornings 10 to 12, give you another plug. Thank you. Uh, we are Checks here in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> we are here today to talk about the Steelers' upcoming game against the Cincinnati Bengals, the surprising Cincinnati Bengals, 7-4, uh, and four, uh, I believe. They right? are seven and four. Steelers eight and three. Uh, this uh, key AFC North matchup uh, Sunday at Heinz Field. Uh, George, uh, as I mentioned to you before we started taping, you're going to have to carry uh, this segment uh, a good bit yourself. I've been kind of tied up with uh, uh, our basketball preview edition, high school basketball well, it's preview edition. Probably a good edition. thing that I just came from practice. Uh, there you go. <laughs> this is fresh, hot off the press, so to speak. Yeah. Um, well, the general uh, conversation was uh, it's sort of odd uh, that uh, it's this close together, the games. It's three yeah. weeks, uh, yeah. and a lot of people are wondering whether there will, will be any adjustments made uh, this quickly after the first go-around. You know, it's kind of hard to change things up when two teams know each other as well as they do. They play twice a season. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know just about everything well, about the opponent. Well, yeah. yeah, except in this case, I, I think, you know, the Steelers, I'm sure, learned a good bit about Andy Dalton the they, first they, time they, around they, did. they didn't know. Before. And one thing that's going to be different is they dodged a little bit of a bullet in the first game because A.J. Green, who caught a touchdown pass, was injured on that play and didn't play the rest of the game, yeah. and he makes a huge difference mm -hmm. in the Bengals' he, offense. He did return, I believe, last week. He did, yes. yes and scored a touchdown. Scored a there. touchdown. Caught a, caught a big pass. I know they set up the winning field goal. Set, uh, set, set up the winning field goal. So he makes a real difference in the, mm -hmm. the Bengals' offense, and he's become the go-to guy for Andy Dalton. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of big differences, I think the uh, – Cincinnati secondary, I can't remember the the cornerback or safety's name who is injured. Uh, oh, off, off the top of my head, I can't remember his name either, but uh, it's not Johnson, is it? No. No. Um, Short name, uh, anyway. Oh, well. Uh, he is not playing this week. He's not playing this week. Uh, and, and it, should be, it should be a boost to the Steelers uh, offensively, I would think. Well, uh, they need a boost offensively because that was the other subject of conversation. Uh, their performance at Kansas City, everybody I talked to in the locker room connected with the offense agreed it was below the line. 27% mm -hmm. on third down. Right. That has to improve. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, some costly penalties at, at mm -hmm. the wrong time. Right. Uh, uh, they were disjointed in a lot of areas. Uh, mm -hmm. But to a man, everybody said uh, it's nothing to panic over because no, it's, it's very right. fixable. Right. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, playing uh, in the friendly confines of Heinz Field, I'm sure will help. Uh, you know, I mentioned in my column uh, this past week uh, off the Kansas City game that playing in Arrowhead is not an easy Well, thing they haven't do. had a lot of success no, there over the no. years. Uh, uh, it's always been a tough test. Yes, yes. And uh, this was a, another good example of that. Um, but as the Steelers move forward here, uh, you know, everything is still out there in front of them that they set out to accomplish this season. Um, they just got to hold serve uh, yeah. because Baltimore seems to... You know, uh, the holding sir. A lot of people looking ahead mm. in the Steelers uh, media core uh, are looking ahead to San Francisco. They think that mm. that's going to be a real tough test Should for the Steelers to go to the West yeah, Coast, sure. and that might be where they stub their toe. Mm -hmm. uh, but you they can't will be rested going into they that. They will be rested because they play the Browns on the Thursday. Uh, what, 10 days before they play the Niners on a Monday night? That being Thursday. said, uh, the, the team can't afford to overlook Cincinnati because no. Cincinnati oh, no. could very easily right. and uh, I, cause them some problems. The weapons and the tools are there for them mm -hmm. to give Pittsburgh a game. Yeah, I uh, heard a comment earlier today somewhere, must have been on the radio uh, on my way in here to work, that uh, the biggest improvement f for the Bengals is apparently on defense. The defense has played very well. I, I didn't look at the stats after last week, but going back to the week before, I think they were number four mm -hmm. in, in the NFL in, mm -hmm. in total defense and the things that they were doing. Uh, and uh, I think it's Mike Zimmer mm -hmm. is the defensive coordinator. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he's done a great job with that defense, but they've got some guys playing. The thing that they have that a lot of other teams don't have is uh, they've got at least uh, – seven linemen, sometimes mm -hmm. depending on whether some people are healthy, maybe uh, as much as eight 
that they can rotate in mm -hmm. and out keep them all fresh. and keep them all fresh and they have through the course of the uh, the season been getting tremendous pressure from their down line and mm -hmm. that's a big plus mm -hmm. for any team in the mm -hmm. NFL mm -hmm. yeah and you know hey that'll test the Steelers uh, offensive line I would think this week and uh, that, that's the other thing uh, they were forced to uh, shake up things again Ligurski had to go to center and mm -hmm. he did a very good job Pouncey's supposed to be back. Uh, uh, he is trying to gain some weight because I guess he was very sick with the stomach mm -hmm. virus. Uh, and uh, they're hoping that that's going to be it. I did chat with Richard Mendenhall today, but, and I mentioned that, you know, uh, how much of a problem has it been uh, that the offensive line for much of the season has been in a constant flux. Guys mm -hmm. have had to be plugged in. And he cited the Mike Tomlinism that they all use. Yeah. The standard yeah. is the standard. You uh, plug the guy in. And you he, know, and I'll tell you this. I thought that um, the Steelers running game seemed to come to life. Uh, and I don't want to make this sound like a, uh, a shot at uh, uh, Marquise Pouncey. But Doug Lagursky is a heck of a good football player. And he mm -hmm. moved to center, and it seemed almost it was almost seamless. The, the running game seemed to come to life mid to, mid to late third quarter. Well, the other thing that happened in there, and it was brought out by a couple of people who, who cover the team on a regular basis, uh, Kimo Iatu had fallen into disfavor, and that's mm -hmm. why Ligursky was starting. But when they moved Ligursky to center, mm -hmm. Chris Kimo Iatu came in. One thing he can do is pull yeah and, and lee and he had a couple of really really good uh -huh. plays pulling out yeah. and doing well, that and i'm sure the benching got his attention a little bit he, he might have to go in there and uh draw any penalties uh especially none of the uh stupid piling on penalties that he was uh kind of making a habit of getting uh he, did, he didn't have a holding call against him no no flags thrown against him uh they got his attention yeah, but make no mistake, this will be a test for the Steelers to keep Roethlisberger clean in yes. this ball game against the, against Cincinnati. And uh, the other thing is, you know, you're you're wondering about some of the walking wounded. The uh, the report is Troy is not having any concussion like mm -hmm. symptoms. Troy Palomalo, he's expected to play. Uh, Lamar that's Woodley good. Is Lamar Woodley. Dick LeBeau, I saw him in the uh, lunchroom, I asked him, and he just went like this. Uh, <laughs> I'm keeping yeah. my fingers crossed uh -huh. that, that he's going to be back. Although I will say this, I have not been dissatisfied. No. Uh, they're, different, di yeah, they're different players, right. but I have not been dissatisfied with Jason World. I'm sure they're asked to do different things in LeBeau's defense. They are. You can't expect Jason Worlds to come in. Well, Ryan Monday use. said as much. He said, I'm not Troy Polamalu. Right. He said, I came in and did what I do. I had 10 tackles and you know, an interception. He, I was pleased with what I did within the framework of our defense. Um, he pointed out that uh, that is sometimes overlooked by uh, the people who cover the National Football League and the fans that one of the great strengths of the Steelers is that some of these younger players are getting playing mm -hmm. time and yeah. they are contributing yeah. and he said depth is a factor that we have more depth than a lot of other teams do. Mm -hmm. What was it that Warren Sapp said earlier in the year about the old, old, yeah, yeah. The old Steelers they're, But they're getting younger and younger with some of these guys being put in there so Warren has got to reevaluate that I think. <laughs> oh yeah, he, uh, he said some things even about uh, James Harrison being over the hill, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. And I will say this, James Harrison, according to Jim Wexel, who did a film review for the Her for HeraldStandard.com this week. Uh, I didn't know he was like Cisco and Ebert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's more like an assistant coach than Ebert and those okay, guys. Okay. At least he thinks, he thinks like a coach, I think. But anyway, I thought he, you were going to say he thinks he, he is an assistant coach. No, 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 no. <laughs> he, he picked up from the film study that... Um, James Harrison was not nearly as effective in the second half, wondering whether he might have tweaked his back a little bit or something. That, uh, well, he wasn't very noticeable. I, I will say this, uh, and I don't, I didn't break it down like Jim does, but there were a couple times, and I guess you could say this about Harrison every game, they were holding. Uh, and yeah. the one guy had his hand inside his, his face mask, and they didn't call it. He, said, yeah. no, he can't do that. Yeah. You know? right. But, uh, I mean, you could say that a, a lot uh, about Harrison. But uh, uh, some of the young guys have got to step up, and they've been stepping up. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also had a nice conversation with Wesley Saunders today. Mm -hmm. Okay, speaking uh, of young guys. Speaking of young guys who made, made a very nice catch mm -hmm. and did a nice little toe dance mm -hmm. to keep it in. And he said he works on that with Antonio Brown mm -hmm. and the other uh, receivers. And I said, well, I heard Mike Wallace talking about you guys, and you're trying to be included with young money, mm -hmm. the, 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 the young wide receivers. And he says, well, the jury's still out. They said I had to make a, a, a significant play. 
He yeah. said, I hope after the Kansas City game that I have made a significant play. Yeah, I am now true. a member of Young Money. Yeah, well, hey. Can't have enough young money. That's true. Uh, but, uh, that, you know, that's another example of uh, workmanlike attitude, but yet they have fun mm -hmm. in the locker room. Uh, I think we probably spoke about this uh, in our first look at the Cincinnati Bengals, but I, I don't think I could say too many times uh, what a great job Marvin Lewis does with the Bengals. Well, and of year course, in and year out. he does, and he certainly had to put up with uh, theatrics over right. the past few years. I mean, Cincinnati was uh, the NFL's version of a soap opera yeah. with yeah. some of the things that were going on there. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, when Marvin talked to the media today, they brought that up, and all he would say is, we have different personnel. <laughs> Whatever that means, uh, uh, you know that, right. that means that no Ocho Cinco and right. uh, none of those, uh, right. you know, right. or, and no Terrell or Owens, Terrell Owens. Yeah. or Carson Palmer oh. for that matter. Although I don't know that he was necessarily. A, I think he was more the target of uh, some yeah. of the abuse uh, yeah. from his own wide receivers. Well, you know, uh, I guess the point to be made is that Marvin not only survived. All of the shenanigans going on there. But he's changed the there. face of the bank. But he has. He really has. He 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 stuck it out. He held that job when there weren't many people who probably wanted to be the Cincinnati Bengals head coach, and now he's starting to to form it into his team. It's taken a while, but he is. Uh, he's finally seems to have taken control of the team back, uh, control of the locker room. I mean, you know, maybe it's Andy Dalton's team now, but he's a rookie. Uh, you know, defensively they have a lot of good players, but. Is there a star on their defense? Not really one that no, uh, is, yeah, a, is a household name like right. a Ray Lewis or a Troy Palomalo or something. Right. Like that. He has a lot of good serviceable players in there to put in there to do a job. They go in and do their job, and the wins are piling up. Well, the other thing that uh, really came out in the locker room today is after that first meeting mm -hmm. between the Steelers and Bengals, just how impressed the Steelers were with Andy mm -hmm. Dalton. The young quarterback. Yes, right. To a man, they said, "This guy, mm -hmm. you know, he's a little different than your average rookie right. quarterback." Yeah, yeah. Know? He has a lot, uh, lot going on upstairs, uh, and you know, calls a good game. Doesn't doesn't make many foolish mistakes uh, as a lot of rookies tend to do. Uh, stays calm, stays poised. Really commands. What the really player. impressed me is some of the throws he made. Though. Yeah. I mean, some of the throws. I mean, were yeah. right on the money. Uh, you know, he's got great accuracy. Mm -hmm. He really mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, I thought I heard a very interesting. Uh, on my way into to the Steelers today, uh, they had Phil Sims on mm -hmm. one of the radio stations in mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, and he was talking a little bit about Dalton and how impressive he has been. He said, "Now let's keep in mind that he." may have been a little bit different than your average college quarterback coming out of college into because he had four years mm -hmm. of snaps at mm -hmm. TCU. A lot of snaps. Yeah. And he said, Gary Patterson, the coach at TCU, is no shrinking violent. Yeah. He said, I'm sure he's probably got yeah. more grief for yeah. Gary Patterson than he's yeah. got ever for Marvin Lewis yeah. of the Bengals. Probably and he said that has prepared him well. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it has. Uh, and again, the game is, uh, is this Sunday at Heinz Field, 1 o'clock start, uh, Steelers and Bengals. And uh, I guess that'll pretty much wrap up this edition of the fifth well, quarter. Uh, who do you like, though? Let's, oh, I uh, guess we should do we that. We should do that. Should, yeah. You know, the Steelers uh, went into a hostile environment at Paul Brown Stadium and pulled out a win, I believe a seven-point win. Seven-point win. Uh, I, I can't see a reason why they wouldn't do the same again. At home, at least a seven-point win. Uh, I'm thinking at least a seven-point win, possibly a ten-point win. But yeah. I, I like them at home. I, yes. I think the home field yeah. advantage will will be big in this game. We've them. talked about not many adjustments from since it's such a close window. But don't forget, Andy Dalton, even though he's having a great year, is still a rookie quarterback, and he's still going against Dick LeBeau's defense and in, the, in Dick LeBeau's backyard. And the old wizard is just. He may be conjured He's just up brewing something. up some yeah, things oh, for yeah. Andy Dalton. He really yeah. is. Yeah. Okay, so that will wrap up this edition of the fifth quarter. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.